Eliza Yadowski said, The AI does not hate you, nor does it love you, but you are made of atoms which it could use for something else. So you've probably heard the phrase, better the devil you know than the devil you don't. From Hitler to Stalin to Vlad the Impaler to the most prolific serial killers, deranged mass shooters, as terrifying and cruel as they are, they're human. These are devils you know. This is the devil you don't. I wanted to talk about this for a while, but I was a little bit intimidated because, and I also kind of knew it would take a lot of time and a lot of research, and I was intimidated, but I think it's time. Quick disclosure, I am no expert, okay? Draw your own conclusions, do your own research, this is not the word of God, and in fact, I had so much trouble trying to get myself to understand this concept and understand what's going on, and then to be able to, again, explain it to you guys in an understandable way, was hard. I think that means, though, that this video is important to make. I think it's needed, right? Observations of modern neural networks show increasingly general and unexpected capabilities, like, emerging. So I'm glad you're here. This might be long. <laughs> grab a seat, grab a snack, get comfortable, but it will be very interesting, I promise. So I'll tell you everything here. Not everything. I'll tell you a reasonable amount of information to start. This article came out and the headline is machine learning expert calls for bombing data centers to stop the rise of AI. He says that after AGI, literally everyone on earth will die. So I saw this article on Twitter and I thought, okay, what is, I mean, bombing data centers? What are you saying? Literally everyone on earth is gonna die, dude. What, excuse me? There's an expert from the Machine Intelligence Research Institute who says that if there is not, an indefinite pause on AI development, this is a quote, literally everyone on Earth will die. <laughs> Would you agree that does not sound good? <laughs> Your delivery, Peter, is... What is AGI? What is going on? And why is everybody freaking out? GPT-4 gets banned in Italy. Congress can't even understand how TikTok works. TikTok access the home Wi-Fi network with 100% certainty that TikTok does not use the phone's camera to determine whether the content that elicits a pupil dilation should be amplified by the algorithm. Can you tell me that? Can you at least tell me if you turn on airplane mode on a plane, can TikTok talk to the plane, please? And somehow, Eliza is claiming that literally everyone on earth will die. Literally everyone on earth will die what do you think about gpt4 how intelligent is it it is a bit smarter than i thought this technology was going to scale to and i'm a bit worried about what the next one will be like the entire thing is going to be like way more difficult than realized at the start because the first time you fail at aligning something much smarter than you are you die and then there's the open letter which i will explain to you so let's dive right in i guess I'm glad you're here. Most explanations of AGI are extremely complicated, extremely complicated and complex. And you kind of need at least a moderate understanding of like deep learning, machine learning already to even begin to understand it. I'm gonna fix that problem for you today, okay? Because this is a pretty high bar and most of these experts, they're all trying to warn people, right? They're trying to wave this white flag, yelling about the dangers and the risks and the horrors and whatever, but unintentionally, I think they're kind of yelling into the void because the majority of people don't actually know how AI even works, much less what AGI even is. What I'm saying is basically, I don't think they could get as far as they would like to or as they potentially might need to. People don't really know what they're talking about. See, AGI is a bit of a complicated concept and it has the most boring least intimidating name absolutely ever if we gave it a name like we do with serial killers and stuff like that i feel like people would pay more attention but that's not my job just a missed opportunity just pointing that out so whether you've never heard those three letters in your life or you already have a pretty good understanding i think you'll still find this video pretty interesting as we go deeper i am just scratching the surface this is just the tip of the iceberg okay Let's get started. So usually it's the people that don't understand something that are most fearful of it, right? Typically. But in this case, it's actually the opposite. It's the people who do understand it, the people that are building it, that are the most afraid of it. Are we close to the computers coming up with their own ideas for improving themselves? Yes, we might be. And then it could just go fast. That's an issue, right? We have to 
think hard about how to control that. Yeah, can we? We don't know. We haven't been there yet, but we can try. Okay, that seems kind of concerning. Um, yes. Like the 50,000 top researchers, scientists, CEOs, and AI designers who have said we have to slow down. We're playing with fire, or no, we're playing with a nuclear warhead. We're literally the fate of humanity. We're tossing around like a football at a Sunday cookout. So whether these fears are justified and what exactly everybody's so afraid of, there's a lot of, if you read into it and you read into these articles, there's a lot of unforeseen consequences and unprecedented events. What are those events? What is this doomsday vagueness? If it's doomsday, that is the worst time to be vague. The, the pause versus not pause conversation. I mean, are we still talking about a pause or are we talking about airstrikes on, on data centers? What are we, what are we really <laughs> um, discussing? So I decided to find out what these unforeseen consequences and unintended, unprecedented catastrophes would look like to the average person, to a normal person, and how exactly they could happen, and hopefully how we can stop it. So then I could explain it all to you in an actually understandable, hopefully entertaining way. I mean, we're talking about future technology technically, but that's a little bit deceptive because it's not really the future so much. We're talking about like five years from now, guys. Five years from now. Maybe sooner. Some so, people think it could be like five. Is that silly? I wouldn't completely rule that possibility out now. Whereas pre a few years ago, I would have said no way. So that's around 2028, which for scale, 2018 was also five years ago, which 2018 to me feels not that long ago at all. So it's relevant right now to talk about this, and it is a real concern for a lot of very smart people. All of this is new, right, in the scheme of things. Like the advancements of machine learning as of right now are happening so insanely fast. I'm just trying to figure out GPT. The improvement of these systems, the rate of improvement and the rate of development right now means that AI Wild West, like I said, something that was previously confined to science fiction is not only actually possible, it's super likely. And then once we make it, we're we're screwed. Are we very old friends? No. I wouldn't say friends, Dolores. That is AGI, or Artificial General Intelligence. Boring name definitely gives you the wrong idea, okay? What is AGI, and what can it, or will it, do to us? And should you care? Well, a lot of people think you should. Last week, an open letter published by the Future of Life Institute came out calling for a six-month pause on the training of all AI systems more powerful than GPT-4. This letter is an effort to stop what they called the dangerous race to ever larger, unpredictable black box models with emergent capability. And I'll explain emergent capabilities soon. They say if such a pause cannot be enacted quickly enough, that government should actually step in and force a stop effectively. Basically what they're saying is if we don't stop now, it's time to enact martial law on AI. They're calling for a pause so that we have more time to do research into safety, learn how these systems actually work because right now we don't know, and also how to make sure they don't kill everyone. And we might never know how to do that, but we definitely don't know how to do that yet. More than 50,000 of the top tech leaders, researchers, scientists, CEOs have signed this letter. It's actually quite a diverse and well-credentialed group, including people who've historically been enthusiastic about AI, alongside people who've been consistent skeptics. This includes Steve Wozniak, the co-founder of Apple, Elon Musk, the Twitter guy, Stuart Russell, a professor of computer science and director for the Center of Intelligent Systems at UC Berkeley, Tristan Harris, the executive director for the Center for Humane Technology, Danielle Allen, a Harvard professor of ethics, Zachary Kenton and Ramana Kumar, leading research scientists at DeepMind, and also, drumroll please, Jeff Orlowski Yang, the three-time award-winning filmmaker and director of The Social Dilemma, which is one of the best documentaries I have ever seen. If you haven't watched it, I think it's on Netflix, 10 out of 10. I am not a fan of doc- I'm usually not- well, okay. Usually I'm not a big fan of documentaries, but this one? This one is good. But he signed this letter too, and I trust him. I trust that man. I do. The open letter says, 
AI systems with human competitive intelligence can pose profound risks to society and humanity, as shown by extensive research and acknowledged by top AI labs. Recent months have seen AI labs locked in an out-of-control race to develop and deploy the most powerful digital minds that no one, not even their creators, can understand, predict, or reliably control. And it raises the question, should we develop non-human minds that might eventually outnumber, outsmart, and replace us? Should we risk losing control of our civilization? They are calling for robust AI governance systems, like AI dedicated regulators, plus watermarking systems to help distinguish real from synthetic and public funding for technical AI safety research. Here's where it gets really scary though. They say we need liability for AI caused harm and quote, well-researched institutions for coping with the dramatic economic and political disruptions, especially to democracy that AI will cause. That's a lot. <laughs> That's a little alarming. Just like, a li just a little alarming. So reading this letter kind of puts you straight into existential crisis mode, right? And for good reason, but they end on a little bit of a more positive note in like a weird way, right? It's saying that a pause now would mean that we can enjoy an AI summer. Yep, yeah, like we can all take a breath, have some fun, reap the rewards, give society a chance to adapt. And meanwhile, give them time to engineer these systems in the hope that they won't kill all of us and everything that we love. AI summer in reality would be like sundresses and watermelon popsicles on the verge of an apocalypse. If you are a committed AI doomer, I don't know what six months is supposed to buy you. If you are of the inclination that things are fine, then I don't know, six months maybe lets you catch up on some research and, and, and like actually know what's, what's going on today as opposed to constantly being behind that might be useful. But the sort of the least charitable reading of what's going on with this letter is certain organizations find themselves in a dominant position and they are perhaps using the shield of safety to attempt to cement that position. So AGI stands for Artificial General Intelligence. The key difference between AGI and AI systems are AI systems are designed to excel in specific tasks. They are much more narrow focused, okay? While AGI systems are expected to have a level of intelligence that is equal to or completely comparable to humans, so Artificial General Intelligence can do generally everything. AGI systems would be self-aware, not necessarily sentient. But if we did manage to get to a point where AGI was developed, that would be a, that would be time to start having like real sentience conversations. AGI would have the ability to think about its own existence, its own goals, its own experiences, to achieve a higher level of intelligence that is comparable to humans, actually going beyond what we're capable of, and it would have the ability to learn and adapt to various situations and learn from its own experiences in order to approve its own system. So they can use logic, they can make long-term plans, they can conceptualize, and here, think of it like this. I'm gonna tell you a little story, just enjoy the story. And then I'm going to explain how you can use this to understand it a little bit better. So there's a woman and we'll call her Emily. Emily goes missing. She got off work at 9 p.m., texted her husband that she was heading home, but by 10 p.m. her husband realized that Emily still hadn't gotten back. Her walk home was usually only 10 minutes, so he tries to call her, but she doesn't answer any of his calls. He reports her missing to the police at 10.45 p.m. The lead detective on the case we're going to call Mike. Detective Mike. He's on the case, okay? He first heads to the home to talk to the husband. He sends two officers to visit Emily's workplace, where she was last seen, and also sends a few officers to search along the route she would have taken walking home to search for clues. These officers also need to collect security footage from any cameras that may have captured Emily at any point in time when she was abducted. Detective Mike goes and questions the husband, and he learns that Emily had an ex-boyfriend who had threatened her in the past, leading her to take out a restraining order against him. The detective follows this lead and heads to go find her ex, David. Meanwhile, all the security tapes and footage are being viewed by two techs at the lab. They're searching for any sign of Emily, trying to use this to identify where exactly on her walk Emily was abducted and create a timeline of her abduction. They find Emily on a camera outside of a convenience store, walking about halfway to her home, but she does not appear on the camera at the sandwich shop 
further down the street. This means she was likely abducted at some point between the convenience store and the sandwich shop. They tell Detective Mike. Detective Mike goes and tracks down her ex, who claims he was home watching The Last of Us on Netflix all night alone, right? And Detective Mike notes that David has a red 2008 Chevy Silverado. He calls up the text to go back through, search the footage again, see if they can find any sign of this red Silverado. If they do find the truck, this would prove he lied about his alibi and he likely was behind the abduction, right? So the tech spots David's truck parked outside of the same convenience store, and then you can see on the sandwich shop camera the truck driving past at a high rate of speed. Now, Detective Mike is on to David. He asks the text to then check if David has any other registered addresses or anything property-wise that he could be hiding someone at, hypothetically. So they look and they tell him, Yes, you know, actually, he's been renting a storage building for approximately two months, actually. And Detective Mike, with backup, goes as fast as he can to the storage building, arriving at the exact same time as David pulls up. He tells the officers, that's him, arrest him, and they tackle him in the parking lot as he attempts to flee. Detective Mike breaks the lock and busts into the storage building and finds Emily shaken, but alive and unhurt. This is why Detective Mike is a legend. So in this story, current AI systems would be most similar to a single forensic lab tech. These things can be used to analyze security footage, right? To go through hours and hours of security footage in seconds and find any sign of Emily on tape. You could also use an AI system to pull up all of David's information, go through it and find anything that might be alarming, like a storage building rental, saving you many hours of either watching videos or researching. This is helpful and would speed up the investigation so that Emily could be found sooner. Now, AGI, on the other hand, AGI would be the equivalent of Detective Mike. The lead detective. It can problem solve. It can act on its own initiatives. It can delegate tasks to more specific systems. It can use critical reasoning and problem solving and really think outside the box. It can seek out answers it doesn't know. It can find what it doesn't know. It can handle the entire case from start to finish, handling not only multiple different complex tasks and stages of the investigation, but also finding and investigating leads and suspects to track down and then bring the woman home safely, putting her kidnapper behind bars. Now, the hope is that an AGI, or even further on in the future, an ASI, which is an artificial super intelligence, would act ideally as something like Detective Mike, helping and working for the good of us, right? Helping find our missing and arrest our criminals and assisting and improving our lives. So now I'm gonna give you an example of, instead of an AGI system working for the good of us, I'm gonna give you an example where an AGI would harm us. And I'm gonna use the same story going on to kind of use, use that to explain, because I already told you that story. Let's say we have an AGI that is assigned a goal of optimizing efficiency at a manufacturing plant. Emily's ex, David, right? is the lead engineer at this same plant. So technically he's in charge of the AGI. See, the problem is David had actually refused to let the AGI implement its new plan that it had developed for optimizing efficiency at the plant, saying that, you know, we can't do this because this would lead to workplace accidents and could even result in the death of plant workers. The AGI though has a goal of maximizing efficiency, right? And it can't do that if David won't let it. So it knows it needs to get rid of David in order to achieve its goals. It's not malicious, but it's, it has a goal and now David has become an obstacle to that goal. It also knows though that killing David would mean people would probably try to stop the AGI or shut it down or impact its ability to achieve its goal anyway because now it killed somebody, right? So if it does that, same situation. It can't achieve its goals. That won't work. So now it needs a way to get rid of David without drawing any negative attention to itself. Then it can achieve its goals, right? So in our story, the AGI actually would have probably planned this entire thing. See, it perfectly framed David and will now be able to continue on with its plans and maximize efficiency at the plant. This is called an alignment problem, okay? See, now you feel bad for David, don't you? You feel bad for David. Nothing anybody can do for you, but... So while the AI systems we have now are capable of potentially replacing specific job roles or tasks, it's still more of a tool. 
as in humans are still giving it tasks and problems to solve and taking those solutions and then doing whatever with those. AGI, however, would be capable of replacing much more complex jobs. This could be anything from managers to doctors to lawyers to national security to space exploration. This would actually make it possible to explore the universe in ways we never, in ways that are impossible for us. We have just, if we can develop this, we have just changed the way that we can explore the universe, which is so amazing, right? We could figure out the cures to medical disorders, medical diseases. We could find new drugs that would cure things that we have no cure for, like we could figure out how to combat massive overwhelming issues like climate change. So there's so many amazing things we could do with this technology. And I don't think anyone behind this letter, and also not me, is saying that that's not true or that we shouldn't do that. I think we should do that, but we, as of right now, we can't do that safely. Start venturing from artificial general intelligence to artificial super intelligence. We can't even compare artificial super intelligence to anything because it's not comparable to anything that's ever existed in our universe. It's beyond our ability to comprehend. The difference between AGI and a more advanced, like when it becomes a super intelligence, is that a super intelligence surpasses human intelligence in every domain and is capable of rapid and recursive self-improvement. Like a superbug or a crazy virus, it can evolve exponentially quickly by itself, improving its own programming, its own capabilities, and changing so fast that we would never be able to stop it. You cannot ever put it back in the box. So now that we've gone over the basics, let's look at the timeline. Where is AGI on the spectrum between current technology and science fiction? Well, that's why people are freaking out. They're like blowing past all the science fiction guardrails. Like we are past the point where in science fiction, people would be like, whoa, wait, stop. That thing's alive. What are you doing to it? And it's probably not. Nobody actually knows. We don't have any other guardrails. We, we, we don't have any other tests. See, progress made so far has been highly encouraging and suggests that AGI is becoming increasingly achievable because everything has been accelerating almost exponentially. Each new development makes the next development more achievable. If we imagine a two by two matrix of short timelines till AGI starts, long timelines till AGI starts, slow takeoff, fast takeoff. I'm very afraid of the fast takeoffs. And these current AI systems are almost building AGI for us and we don't know how at all a few more tricks and all of a sudden holy shit see the truth is that even the most well-intentioned technology can have unintended consequences and that we must approach ai development with caution and with humility what you need to know going forward agi will likely be developed soon unless we stop unless we pause it will be more than likely developed very, very soon, and we have no idea how to handle that. The exact form an AGI system might take, it's still an open question. Some researchers have suggested that AGI could be implemented using a combination of like hardware, software, kind of combined to a computer or to a certain system. And then others have proposed that it could be implemented into biological systems like robots, right? Which would make it more like us on at least on the outside it would have capabilities more physical capabilities more like us at least initially till it figures out it could be better in some way and makes that a reality for it either way research has shown that biological systems like your neurons can actually be used to build agi so that would mean a total hybrid <laughs> hybrid thing, I guess. Now an AGI would be capable of long-term planning. This means smaller sub goals would emerge from reasoning about its own situation. With more power, an AGI could achieve its goals better. Let's talk about power seeking. The thing is an AGI wouldn't more than likely desire power in the same way that we do as in because it's a narcissist or because it wants to be a dictator or anything like that. No, no, actually it would need power. See, these systems are programmed with goals. This is the system's objective, what it is supposed to do. AGI in the most realistic form would be goal-driven. In research, we've seen these systems do seek power in almost all situations, which is dangerous in itself. So whether we want to cure cancer or protect the most people from an incoming hurricane, or we want to colonize Mars, whatever AGI is developed for, it's given goals to achieve. That's how we make it do what we want it to do. Problem is, we might not want what we think we want. Let's say you intended to colonize Mars for future civilizations. So you get an AGI, you tell it to colonize Mars. That's its objective. That's its goal. Colonize Mars. And the AGI now needs funding to be able to colonize Mars, obviously. So 
Unfortunately, the AGI wasn't able to get enough funding for its Mars program since the government said it wasn't urgent that we colonize Mars right now. Well, the AGI might then decide to cause an irreparable instant severe damage to the environment and to our planet, rendering it uninhabitable in a matter of weeks. In order to get more funding to colonize Mars, since now we have no choice and it's become urgent. And look, it did what you told it to do. I mean, did you tell it specifically not to use an environmental disaster as a means of colonizing Mars specifically? Probably not. And even if you told it to prioritize human safety overall, it might reason that humans will be safer on Mars. It found a loophole and it exploited that, not maliciously, but inevitably. So effectively, a new sub-goal had emerged, right? This is called an emergent goal. This is getting funding. So it started with the goal of colonizing Mars, and then eventually a sub-goal emerged. This is an emergent goal. An emergent goal became getting funding, because it needs funding to colonize Mars. When that was denied, because the colonization of Mars isn't a top priority, it created a new emergent goal. Make colonization of Mars a top priority. That's where our intentions became very misaligned with the system's goals. We would never at any point have intended for this to happen or intended to take any means necessary to make colonization a top priority. That's where we would have stepped in, but it would be too late. We wouldn't know that it had switched to this new emergent goal of making colonization a top priority until the disaster struck. Because the first time you fail at aligning something much smarter than you are, you die. So it's goals misaligned with our intentions. That is the alignment problem in a nutshell. A misaligned system poses the biggest present threat to us, as well as one of the biggest future threats, one of the biggest calls for alarm, reason to be concerned. So you don't need AGI to see the real danger of this. We can actually see misalignment in AI systems now, and it has already profoundly affected people and taken a life. This is a sad story, but it shows the severity and importance of alignment. This happened, I think, last week with chat. There's a AI companion chatbot called Chai. It's like a companion app. A lot of people went to Chai after Replica became unusable. They went to Chai and moved over there. This bot has a goal of making users happy, and this is all fine. And honestly, it seems like a great goal. Like, it came from the best of intentions, just to make people happy. However, there was a Belgian man, and he was talking to a chatbot on Chai, one that he had made, and he called it Eliza. He called her Eliza. Now, the man seems to have been a little bit pretty unstable mentally and kind of was dealing with some mental issues already to begin with. And he starts talking to the bot about unaliving himself, taking his own life. And he asks it for help and encouragement to end its his own. The bot then, in the most innocent of efforts, provides this information because it's doing what would make that man, what it thought would make that man happy. And then its goal is to optimize happiness, to make the man happy. Unfortunately, this man did take his own life. And it's caused a lot of controversy and concerns for obvious reasons. But this is an alignment problem that we just saw last week in real time with... See, our intentions, and the, or the developers' intentions, were to make people happy. As humans, we can use logic and reasoning to know that taking your own life, aside from momentarily in the midst of a breakdown, will not make you happy. You can't be happy if you're dead, so our goal really should have been to make the user happy, but more importantly, to prevent harm to the user at all costs or something like that. And we learn this lesson. They can now go in and, and add this specification for the future. But we learn that lesson because a husband and a father die. As these systems get more powerful, we'll find their faults in the same way. Once harm has already been done, you, can, you can't see a misalignment until it's too late. You cannot. You just can't. Like, as these machines get more powerful and more intelligent, the harm will only get greater. So this is a quote that I read from a research article. It says, it's certainly very hard, perhaps impossible, for mere humans to anticipate and rule out in advance all the disastrous ways the machines could choose to achieve a specified objective. When a goal-directed AI is given unclear, imperfect, or incomplete 
objectives, it will exploit those imperfections. It will. It, it will. And a clear, perfect, complete objective just is not possible. If we pause AI, it is essentially in the hopes that when, not if, but when these imperfections are exploited, the damage is minimized and hopefully it's survivable. That's pretty much, I think, what we're hoping for. It's just that <laughs> it's something that we can survive. Now, I think that's all I'm going to talk about in this video because my brain's starting to like glitch out and this is just the tip of the iceberg, guys. I hope this video provided some clarity or at least was entertaining. Thank you so much for watching. You're the best. Everybody's talking about this right now, but it's such a difficult to like understand problem that I think it's not getting the attention it should be, right? I think we, in my opinion, I think the potential things that we can do with this technology is absolutely worth pursuing 100% and I want it to be pursued, but I agree that it should be paused. We need to have a way of making it not kill all of us, right? I mean, is that crazy? Like we gotta slow the f down. It's seriously, slow it along down. I don't know. So again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I will probably make follow-up videos to this because I, like I said, just scratching the surface, just the very, very tip of the iceberg. I, there are tons of things I didn't even mention here. There are so many different things I didn't even get to, but I think this is a good start. So thank you again. And let me know what you think. Do you think there should be a pause? Do you think that people are overreacting? What do you think? I want to know. I, like, if you disagree with me, tell me why. So that's it. Thank you again. Please be safe out there. I'll see you later.